Welcome to Chewing the Cud with Mike Benyon Rowe and Lee Robertson. Oh, welcome to this week's special episode of Chewing the Cud that we're calling Wish You Were Queer. That's right. This week we have sent Mike and Dr. Phil away to Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. But before that, I'm just going to remind you all of the ways of getting hold of us. It's at the Cud TV on social media where you can follow us, the Cud.tv for the website, and on YouTube and podcast services, look for Chewing the Cud and hit subscribe. And there's people who have commented on our social media, their names scroll along the bottom of the screen. We go over to Phil and Mike in Malaysia. So we're going to do a canopy walk. I'm already sweaty. It's 80 something percent humidity, a thousand degrees C, um, and I'm going up further. <laughs> oh, it's hell. To you. <laughs> Okay. You can talk. I can talk. You can talk, yeah. <sighs> so, it's very humid. <laughs> Just said it on the, on the video there, yes. About 85, 90% humidity. Oh yeah. Okay. You're like struggling there. I'm sort of climbing up a huge staircase. It's almost there, but that's okay. You look confused. I, I'm lost in heat. <laughs> okay. Ooh. And it's Dr. Phil, everybody. Hello. Dr. Phil. A little bit, bit of clever, clever editing there, because he actually said something at that point. I cut out and put some different audio in the background. Oh. Okay. Can I just thing. say? Not a massive fan of the rope walk so far. <laughs> is this in the, is this okay. In the, in the this city? is actually in the city centre. This it's is okay. We're forest, getting there. It's actually rainforest. Okay. It's just bubbly, bouncy. And but I do like bouncy on things. Not normally a bridge. It doesn't look particularly busy. It, it wasn't very busy um, on the walkway, but. Like, 50 feet below us, quite a busy city. Okay. Are there any animals in the canopy of parrots? Some birds. Um, um, hornbills. And a lot of hornbills. 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 Did, <laughs> <laughs> did, did they make you feel welcome in Kuala Lumpur? Yes. Um, actually, very welcoming. Very, very accommodating. Special. <laughs> Did they make you feel special in Kuala Lumpur? If they used lube and everything. <laughs> how, did, how did you... How, how, what would we call people from Kuala Lumpur? Kuala Lumpians? Malaysian. Malaysian. Malaysian, yes. Kuala Lumpur is the city, Malaysia is the country. Oh, OK. Yeah. OK, so how, how were they? How were the people? Very welcoming, very friendly. Nice. Yeah, very nice. talkative as well. OK. Yeah. Do they speak English? Really good English, because it's an ex-English colony. Oh. So, like, the plugs and everything are the British plugs. Oh, OK, that's always a bonus. It is, yeah. Because I've spent 25 minutes looking for a converter and oh, that didn't need one. Didn't need one. No. no. Did, you, did, you, did you dehydrate at any point? Because you look quite sweaty. There. I drank a lot of liquid while I was over there. Wow. But, yeah, I've not yet finished on the walkway, though. Oh, have you still more? We've still got more on the walkway to come. Oh, how interesting. Yes, we'll have a look now. There shan't be any of that this holiday, either. Because it's illegal. <laughs> I mean, not to, to compare Kuala Lumpur to um, London, uh -huh. but in in the Kensington, tube. <laughs> in, no, in Kensington Garden, they have like a walkway in the trees. They do. And this a is lift. a lot higher. I won't. This is a lot higher. This is literally in the treetops of an ancient forest. So if you look at the buildings to, around the side, I'm at the same level as some of the buildings. Okay. Oh. It's very hot.
that is a tower in Kuala Lumpur, Kuala Lumpur Tower. I shall be going up that shortly because I'm doing so well with heights. There we have the world's peace gong. Not as I thought, the world's biggest dong. Something very it's different. Easy mistake to make. Speciality videos only. There we have a large erection. And on said large erection, I shall be going up and meeting the head. Tee hee. Hello. I'm moist. I am Mike Benin Rowe and you're watching Chewing the Cod. Welcome to Malaysia. We're going up the KL Tower, Kuala Lumpur Tower, which is a massive, massive building. It's huge, with a massive head. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with the show, yes, well, do you want to see? Should we have a look? How big's that? It's massive. Fun angles. So yes, we're going up there, Dr. Phil and I, in Malaysia, to have a look around the rest of Kuala Lumpur. Walking on AstroTurf, which has been wetted. So it's wet and slippy. And the humidity is like 85, 90%. It's 29 degrees C. It's half past 11 in the morning. It's gonna get hotter and more humid. Well, yes, we'll teach you more about that in that science, that is. But I'll speak to you later. What, was that not actually somebody had wet that AstroTurf? It was just the sweat that had come no, off no, you? No, it was actually someone was, was wetting it as we were walking past them. To stop it from melting? No, to keep it cool. Oh, OK. Because right, like, people were walking on it barefoot and stuff. And like, oh, that's oh. nice. But I'd already walked the, a little bit and I was that sweaty. It's like nothing was making my shoes come off. Why would I choose somewhere like that, Mike, when you're even you're adverse to the heat? Uh, I'm not adverse to the heat, I'm adverse to the humidity. Okay. Yeah. Um so I actually got up to like thirty two degrees and ninety eight percent humidity. You needed one of those Face. fans that go around your neck. I tried one of those. Mm. Didn't work. Did it not? Didn't work. Still sweaty mess. <sighs> Did your pubes go very frizzy? Did you not see my beard? <laughs> it was I I had a bit of a, an extreme trim oh. later that day. Was it like a fish and chip shop down there? Oh, Ooh. oh, sopping. Sopping it was. Lovely. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so it's very clean. It was very clean, very lovely. Um, lots, lots, what? Very tidy. Very tidy. Very clean. <laughs> did, did, We're still talking about my pubis. Yeah, so. <laughs> I would, I would, I, did we get to see you go up that thing? I think we might go up that in part two. Oh. Mm. Interesting. Yeah, why not? Um, but yeah, have you ever been anywhere that hot and sweaty? Other than a sauna, obviously. I don't need saunas. Um, not, not a sexy time sauna. I don't like, like them. No, um, I've been to Australia. Mm, it's dry in the, heat in Australia. Australia. In the summertime. And I did not believe what I was told. I was like, yeah, whatever. Um, then they were like, no, genuinely, it's horrific. And I'm like, whatever. So the plane landed. Mm -hmm. Fine. Got well, off the yeah. plane. Uh, Brisbane. Okay. In their summer. So it would have been January. Mm -hmm. Through the airport. I'm thinking... Well, the air condition is. <laughs> Went through the doors, collapsed. <laughs> no air. No air to breathe. Yeah. And um, I pretty much was sodden for the first week. <laughs> not in a good way. All right, okay, not getting people. Did you acclimatise after a while? Um, I stayed pretty sweaty. For the duration? For the duration of, of the holiday, yeah. Oh, okay. um, it, I mean, everywhere, anywhere inside had air conditioning, which was blissfully beautiful mm. right um to the point in the, in the hotel room we had it that cold i was wearing pajamas oh i was like oh cold but yeah who cares that's... about the environment mike when, when you... <laughs> i was being cold for a change yeah, yeah. <laughs> who cares yeah. about the orangutans yeah. i care about the orangutans crank that air conditioning up <laughs> but i prefer to be cool <laughs> <laughs> mm. well, what what's coming in part two mike are we going to see anything salacious Delicious, yes, nudes. Um, but you're going to see me um, straddling a giant shaft and rotating my body around its head. Stick around. Welcome back. We're still adventuring round Kuala Lumpur. We join Mike and Phil as they ascend a giant shaft. The world's most annoying lift music. I 
flag so we have that flag so we um smoke free zone. many floors are we going a lot up? it didn't have floor numbers it, it was just not. literally you pressed a button it took you all the way to the top so did you go straight to the top straight to the top so here we are we're up here bearish it's exciting isn't it oh don't like that <laughs> I don't care for that. Is that on the, on the outside? Yeah. Is it like in the air? Oh, no, no, there's a piece of glass there. Oh, okay. We can also film things. <laughs> <laughs> it's not rotating. No, no, you have to walk around it. Oh. I mean, they missed, they missed him. They missed him trick there didn't they what having it, a, have it, it rotate it's huge well you you know the size of it, it couldn't rotate that it could so the stadium that you can see down there was the site of the official malaya's independence declaration on the 31st of August 1957 it was used up until the 1990s when the new stadium opened in 1996 so while you're in Malaysia, if you wanted to do a base jump and jump off the top of this tower, you can do. And that's where you would land. If you were so inclined. Or de-inclined, as the case may be. Did you not fancy that? No. <laughs> I did not fancy jumping off a massive tower. You did, but it built up a bit of wind. That would have been, that would have been refreshing. <laughs> as you scream into the void. Here we have views of the Golden Triangle, which is Kuala Lumpur's busiest city centre, comprising popular shopping landmarks, tourist attractions, business offices and hotels. Also lots of eateries along the walkways as well, which is good. Because we do like to eat things. Shove them in my face. That's food, right? It's food, yes. Very, very um, built up, isn't it? It is, yeah. The Patronus Towers. Famous for being very tall. And being expelled out of a young boy's wand. Something that happens within Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia is that there's that whole mix of old and new. So there's a colonial building right next to a skyscraper. There we have our residence for the evening. Do I need to buy Leah a present? Actually, <laughs> they're much more Lee. Excuse me, how much are the? So, have you bought me things? <laughs> have I bought you a present? Yeah, well, you gave me that shoe thing. I gave you a key ring. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And what happened. you stole off the plane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What stole off the plane. Um, Is there anything else? Do you think I would have spent some some money? You stole some something, tat. didn't you? No, I didn't buy anything. You didn't yet. buy any. Oh. No. God, what a, what a bitch. <laughs> what? Whatever. Um, yeah. <laughs> It's very high up. Did you, did, you, did you go swimming on the swimming pool on the top of the hotel? My hotel, yeah, yeah, I did. I didn't film that. Didn't film that. No one needs to see the red, white. No. no one needs what about to see what about what about a romantic dalliance? Is that allowed there of the no. homosexual variety? No. Would you talk about that a little bit? Never. Mm. Not even in Kuala Lumpur. Oh. No. And now I'm going to take you on a quick tour of an old market. So here we are, Central Market. Been market here since 1888, apparently. In the background you've got the KL Tower and some older buildings right next to the well, Art Deco building. And there's lots of 
local artists and things in here. So very descriptive. And some <laughs> old buildings. Well, there are some old buildings right next to it, an Art Deco building. Right now, you're going to fall in love with this market a little bit. Is it unbelievably full of tat? <laughs> Is it? They, they call it local art and local crafts. I'm drawn to something. Really liked the big one on the right hand side. Yes. Did you, did you not? Did you not um, inquire of the of the price? <laughs> Does it look like a butt plug? like your art really good in it then you can go to the Peng Art Centre because <laughs> it's Peng so in the UK I keep getting adverts for um, should say gentleman's aid you know what I mean um, to make fun times more fun Whereas, yeah, you could get something, um, yeah, Placid Express, moving on, they do, Jumbo Sausage. <laughs> Everywhere in the world has a Jumbo Sausage. Master Crispy. Yes. So we're travelling around this market and it's quite lovely because there's big fans in the ceiling which are wafting, it's wafted as we walk around. And the little specks of white eating here on top are not dandruff. I'm just going to see Zora Pelham just dry and fall off my face. Yes. It's very lovely, lots of things to see. Did you did you partake in a, in a local delicacy or two? What in Placid Express? I don't know what what was in Placid Express. It was just a chemist. Oh, okay. Um, but apparently they're all called Placid. Perhaps they sell like non Viagras. Yeah. yeah. No, but on the street foods. Street, street foods. foods. Yeah, I ate a lot of lovely food. Did you? It's over there. Yeah. yeah. Um, so around that market, there's a lot of fruit stalls. Okay. So at any point, you could just go. Oh, I'll have one of those and. <laughs> Glazing over at me talking about fruit, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dipped in chocolate. Nice. Oh, there we go. Back in the room. Even. Not in that heat, though. <laughs> Actually, all the stalls and stuff that um, had lots of ice on the, the stuff, so it's all really cool. Yeah. I kind of wanted to jump in it a couple of times. But is it one of those places where you have to be careful of, of the water in case it gives you poopy dupes? Poopy dupes. Yeah. Well, I, I had all of the tablets in the world with me. Oh, so okay. to make it quicker, to make it slower, make it oh. harder, make it softer. The, the full selection. Um, but we, we stayed away from tap water where we could. Okay. So Just bottled. Just bottled water. Because it's easy to carry. Mm. You know, walk around with water in your hands like that's no. very messy. Yeah, and get, it evaporates quite quickly. <laughs> it dribbles down your top. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So, like any of the tat in the markets? I mean, sorry, art. Um, you know, some of it was reasonable looking. Yeah. I, I'm not quite sure about the Yasser Arafat picture. <laughs> was, he, was he big in Kuala Lumpur? <laughs> not so much. It was more about the, the, the fact he could do good portraits of people. Oh, OK, but it shows him. Yeah. Did we not tempted to go and sit and for, a, for a portrait? No. No. It worked out at £23. That's not so bad. Huh? That's not so bad. But sat down in a non-air-conditioned room for <laughs> while he did it. 
<laughs> was he not his studio not aircond? I, I didn't want to sit down and wait because oh. by this point in the day, you know, it's just after lunchtime. It's very humid, very hot. Oh, everywhere was wet. Do they not go for a little nap in the afternoon, like in Spain? No, no, they just no. keep going. Okay. Well, it tends to when it, when it starts to rain. They go to sleep when it rains. Yeah, because drop it... on the street, sleep. Yes, because the the rain isn't like rain. It's, it's, like? it's literally sheets of water falling from the oh, sky. Oh, okay. And it's warm, which is quite pleasant. Mm. Yeah. Um, Do they get naked on the streets? Not on the streets. Just on the terraces? Maybe. Oh! Mm. Sounds like you had experience, Mike. <laughs> I had some experiences. Of naked rain. Of naked rain, yeah, yeah. We've actually got some video of the rain now. Very heavy rain, that. Yeah, it was daily lightning. It was, yes. Mm. Scary amounts. Well, like a thunderstorm, though. It, it was lovely because it cleared the air Ooh. for about 30 seconds and then it got really humid again. I'm like, oh. But yeah. Perhaps not the best time of year to go then. It's always like that. It's rainforest. Is it like that all the time? Yeah. Sometimes it only rains like that once a day. Sometimes it rains like that twice a day. It doesn't really have a, a dry season. It's tropics. It's the tropics. It's the rainforest. They call it the rainforest because it rains. It rains and then there's a forest. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Well, stick around because coming up we've got more bits of Kuala Lumpur. Welcome back to this week's special Wish You Were Queer episode of Chewing the Cud. Phil and I are still going round Kuala Lumpur. <clears throat> so now, Mike, you promised me a monarch. Now I want diamonds. This is the National Palace of Malaysia, where the king lives. It's an Islamic in design, which is very beautiful. Here we are at the National Palace of Malaysia. Ooh, King lives there, like ours, but nicer. Lots of gold, Islamic design, very pretty. Big place, big place. Very open, very open, very open. Look around with me. Lots of things in the background. Yes. Ah, it's Phil. <laughs> Did you go in? No, weren't allowed in. Oh. You're not allowed in at all. It's his house. Yeah, but we're allowed to go in Buckingham Palace. We weren't always allowed to go in Buckingham Palace, though. Yeah, but we are now. We are now. Well, we're not yet. So Kuala you could just go to the gates. We go to, well, I could go that far as the gates. Oh, you weren't allowed to go any further. There were, there were armed guards. Oh, they shot you. you. Probably. You couldn't look through. Because that do look suspicious. <laughs> you couldn't look through and see the Big Dipper or anything like that. Like the Ferris wheel or anything. No. It's not actually a theme park. It's say, someone's house. <laughs> I was the king. Uh huh. That would be a theme park. Okay, and you'd have a, a big dipper. Yeah, but I wouldn't let people in it. Oh, would you go in it? Yeah. Okay. On it's a very big big dipper. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> it just it doesn't look like there's a lot of people around. Are they all inside because it's too hot? No, it's it's actually at that point in the the day it was quite cool compared to oh. every other time. Um, it was more of a case of it's it's a touristy place. Not many locals go to the, oh. the gates of the palace and go, oh, yeah. So, yeah. They're out, aren't they? <laughs> Trekking through a load of forest even, to get to I'm, a game I mean, that, that is a prime location for a Mr. Whippy, isn't it? There. <laughs> a lot of space. <laughs> they, don't, they don't really have Mr. Whippy in Malaysia. Well, whatever their version is. Ice cream. Yeah, they could have a... That, that's a that's prime locale, that. Right? You, you could make a mint. <laughs> For the seven tourists that they go, go and well, see. yeah. Because <laughs> it sounds like you're always in need of some hydration. Yeah, I've had water with me. i always had water with me. Oh, well, you know. Yes, yeah. So we said before about, you know, the, the sheets of rain and stuff, mm -hmm. right? Well, it looked very beautiful after the rain and before the rain. So I just wanted to show you the, the comparison between the two. So this is at night at the top of the hotel. How beautiful that looks. It does indeed, Mike. It's very futuristic. 
Oh, that pole. Does that does that does that change colours? The, the the head of on the shaft does change colour. It's going a bit purple. Depending on mood, it does go purple. I did giggle when that happened. And this is literally the rain. Okay, so just after it rains, you get this massive mist as it starts to create clouds. Mm. Oh. So that beautiful cityscape is all obscured by the mist and cloud. And then it goes away. And then it goes away and goes beautiful again. So far, slightly disappointed with the lack of, of wildlife. orange apes. Okay. They tend not to be in city centres. I thought I thought they'd kind of like integrated. <laughs> <laughs> got jobs and shit. Yeah. <laughs> Those haven't got jobs on the street. Like Uber drivers and stuff like that. <laughs> begging for bananas. <laughs> Any bananas, mate. <laughs> no. No, oh. you have to go far away. You have to go on another plane for those. Oh my goodness! Yeah, didn't have a zoo in the in the Kuala Lumpur's. Didn't Kuala Lumpur. Kuala Lumpur's. Kuala Lumpur's. Yeah. No zoo. Um, no zoo. It had a water park. Is that a zoo? No, it had a water park. What's in there then? Slides and rapids. And oh well, that's not what I was. Wave machines. Um, and not this. after that. Did you did you frequent that establishment? No. No. Because no. <laughs> no. because that's not what I was there for. I was there for local things. Local things local and things. local people. We'll have lots of trouble here. Um, <laughs> because we, you know, later that evening we went around at, um, the outdoor market. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I discovered that Phil really can't barter for, for anything. Oh. Now this is a place called the Clay Pot Chicken Rice. Okay, I was told to go here off, off a friend. Right, this is at the end of the market. Okay, and for the two of us to eat, right, cost us three pounds, and it was delicious. Chicken. It, it was chicken and rice and vegetable things. What's that? That's apple juice. Oh. And to make apple juice, they got an apple and they juiced blitzed it. it, and then served it to you. I mean, that's a that's a dietary. Explosion right there, isn't it? <laughs> Waiting to happen. That. It was a clean through. It was a clean through. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Do, you, do, you, do they have like... There is massive purple head. Oh, how, how, how spectacular. <laughs> yes. Do, do you, can you go in at night, have a little bit of a rave? You don't really have a rave up there because you're inside the bit thing that's shining light out. Oh, okay. So you're just in the, in the, the vestibule, I want to say. The vestibule? The area that I was oh, okay. in before. Um, just wandering around. Do they have any discotheques there, Mike? Any nightlife? They do have some nightlife and discotheques did, and did things. Did you frequent? I did not. You didn't? Know. No, I did not. I did not, did not want to brave it. Oh, in case they the boogie man came. you were yeah. light on your loafers and <laughs> a little bit special, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or light on your thongs. Why are you talking about my underwear? No, well, not flip flops. Flip flops. Oh, flip flops. Do you, not do you not do my thong. Not your thong. No. Thong is Australian for flip flops. It is Australian yeah. for flip flops. Or oh, I thought you meant my underpants, oh, okay. but yeah. Um, but you like quiet little camp things, don't you? I do. Yes. Would you like to look around the butterfly sanctuary quite Oh, over? yes. Mm. Currently in a butterfly sanctuary. Quite nice. Lots of little butterflies flapping about. Quite lovely. Very humid. Shockingly. Um, we're talking like 90%, 95% humidity now. That's a lot going on. Um, yeah, it's all good. <laughs> to another. To an even That's more humid humans. place. Here's a dragonfly. Very warm. Oh, I was just about to say, so far, pretty butterfly light. Yeah, no, they're, they're flying around. They're just very quick. Uh, 
and the reason why it's so humid is because they were pumping all this water into the air for the butterflies, because apparently butterflies really like it humid. Well, they need the humidity, don't they? Not that much. <laughs> the selfish wing So while we're here, I might as well talk to you about the um, rules about LGBTQ plus people in all these butterfly places, which is, you know, lovely camp things flapping about. Actually, um, yes. <sighs> Don't have a great history. Um, the LGBTQ plus rights are non-existent. And um, a minister once said that if you, there's only two ways you can get to be an LGBTQ plus character on television, either repenting or dead. So not, uh, not great. Um, oral sex with a man is illegal, regardless of sexuality. And um, sodomite is a word that's used in the, the, the law. Um, it's from the British, British, British law from uh, when it was a British colony. So yes, there's fun. There are gay bars. Not going into any because um, 20 years imprisonment, not going to be fun. Lots of pretty butterflies though. I once went to Chester Zoo. Wow. Again. Well. <laughs> comparable. Exactly the same. Exactly and went same. in their butterfly house. Uh -huh. Giant butterfly landed on me. Oh. Because it knew. It knew what? Knew that I was a homosexual. <laughs> and it adorned me. And I was like, stood there going, what do we do now then? <laughs> well, I couldn't. Shuck sh it stuck on there. <laughs> and I was like, it's going to be with me on. forever. Were you, were you there with a glue gun going? <laughs> Stay <laughs> on. <laughs> no, it was just there. And then the woman, the... I don't think you were a butterfly keeper, wrangler. I don't know. <laughs> butterfly wrangler? Just flicked it off with a stick. Yeah. <laughs> no airs or graces. <laughs> no, but so the humidity of the butterfly house in um, Kuala Lumpur. Chester Zoo. Yes. That you were in. Right. Yes. Very humid. Yeah, very humid. Yeah. Yes. That was about 70%. Okay. And I was like 95. Right. Did they kind of like fly and then die when they got to certain, get certain periphery around you? because of the stench that was coming off and just went <laughs> on the ground. No. No. I still smell delicious. I was just very sweaty. You were dipped in insect repellent. Yeah, that's not how insect repellent works, though. Insect repellent uh, basically masks your smell oh. so that you can't see you. And butterflies don't tend to be that carnivorous. No, they tend not no. to drink a lot of tourist blood. Yeah, which is always a bonus. Yeah. Or like the mosquitoes and things, which I'm oh. quite happy to. Did you see? Do what? So we've got mosquitoes with a big spine, big spiders, like hand-sized spiders. Not really. Your face in the night. No, 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 not big spiders. Cockroaches. Cockroaches. Um. Yes, they did have cockroaches, and they had some of the world's biggest wood lice. Ooh. Yeah, big scary ones. Carantulas. No. 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 More, more like the small things that would kill you, rather than the big things that would kill you. Okay. But it's hot, so big things don't like it. Oh, they can't be bothered. Exactly. Oh, it's too warm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm. Coming up next, Mike goes on Grinder. You're watching Chewing the Cud. I've loaded up my networking applications and I'm ready to go. So, while Phil was asleep, you went looking for a shag then? I'm still here in Kuala Lumpur, and while we've been here, I've been talking to some people on some social networking applications about what it's like to live here. As members of the LGBT community are probably aware that it's not got the best track record. So, after asking people, they turned around and said, I'm not really comfortable being on camera or having a voice recording. So the conversations you're about to hear have been voiced over, um, but are actual conversations from the networking application. First person we're going to speak to is Bob. He's a 35-year-old who's recently moved back to Kuala Lumpur. The first thing I asked Bob was, what is it like being LGBTQ plus in Kuala Lumpur? I'd say it's slightly better compared to other cities. People might not be acceptance, but at least you can be yourself. 
somehow and somewhat, so gays tend to be more comfortable, I feel. P.S. I've been living abroad for more than 12 years, just recently back to Kuala Lumpur since last week. LOL. That's good. Being yourself is very important. Where were you living before? Right. I don't like to hide or pretend to be someone that I'm not, so I don't give a <laughs> here. I will also kiss my husband on the streets, shopping malls, etc. He's li I I've lived in Singapore and Shanghai. And what's the reaction when you kiss your husband in public? People will either choose to pretend they never see in anything or with judgmental eyes. Shrug, shrug, <laughs> shrug emoji, shrug emoji. And what would happen if the police saw you kissing your husband? Don't think we'll be getting any troubles as long as we don't or be naked on the street. <laughs> Not quite sure, to be honest. <laughs> yes, I guess in the street is a big no-no. But since this is a dominant Malay and Muslim country, so long as I'm Chinese, I should be fine. <laughs> right, love life in the US or Europe. Well, we can't streets either. Well, at least there is gay pride, LGBT events. In such events, there were many actions ongoing. I've been there, so I have seen a lot. LOL. I think he was being saucy then, wasn't he? Do you think it'd be different if you were Malaysian? Yes. Malay will get in trouble. What's a lot of trouble? Police might approach you and might be going to prison for several days. Not quite sure, but at least this is what I heard. I know I've been very aware of my own conduct, not being perceived to be gay. Would you say it's easier for foreigners? Well, foreigners are completely fine whenever and wherever in Southeast Asia, because foreigners tend to be more open-minded and open, so don't have to be straight acting. Next, I spoke to a 20-year-old we'll call Frank, who grew up in Kuala Lumpur. What's it like, from your point of view, um, and growing up with your experiences? It's all right. I think a comparison would make it easier. For example, against other Muslim countries, it fares pretty well. I was in Dubai just two weeks ago, and you need a VPN for Grindr, and it definitely felt a lot more risky and restrictive. It also depends on what religion you are, and where it comes to the law. I've seen reports of gay bars being raided by police. Does that happen often? There was a raid on a gay Halloween party a few months ago. It was three weeks before the election, so it was mainly a political move. They, they brought all the Muslim guys to detainment. Do you ever feel like you have to change your behaviour in any way when you're out and about? Not really, no, but maybe I've already subconsciously did that when I was younger, so now I'm used to displaying the correct behaviour. I can understand that. Can you see a time when you're more protected as an LGBTQ plus person by the law? In the future, maybe three to five decades, and also not explicitly protect, more so just no laws are in place to discriminate LGBTQ plus people. And that's two views from LGBTQ plus people within Kuala Lumpur at the moment. It's interesting that a 20 year old is sort of like saying it's going to be at least 30 or 40 years, so 70 before he's even protected by the law and not persecuted. Did you not get fed up and say, well, why are you asking me all these questions? When do you want to see my cock? No, because I started off the conversation saying, look, what, what Oh, OK, so you weren't, you weren't, you weren't. Um, I wasn't teasing them and saying. Gaslighting. No, no. Um, but yeah, it was, a, it was really weird because I said, would you be up for meeting for a coffee and that sort of thing and do it on camera? And nobody wanted to do it on camera no. or even have their voices recorded. As I said, it was, it was really weird uh, that they were being very open with someone. Mm. but still being very guarded about it. Behind a screen. Yeah.
Well, I suppose if the alternative is you get arrested and thrown into prison, you're mm -hmm. not going to... Up to 20 years in prison you can get. Gosh, yeah. I'd stand no chance, would I? As soon as I get off the plane, they no, arrest me. You can be me. camp, that's what they're saying. You can oh, be you can camp. be camp. You can be camp, but no, no gayness. No gayness. Right? In a country, it's... Sounds like, like the country for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, um, oral sex with a man, irrespective of who you are, okay. right, is illegal. Oh. What about with yourself? Oh, with it, no. Not, not even with your mouths. Not even your own people. Not even your own, not even somebody else's, not even if you're a girl doing it to a boy. Oh, complete all. Complete all. ban on oral. Wow. Mm. How do I say hello to people now? <laughs> it's like it's like they've cut your hands off, isn't it? Well, it's called bits of me off, isn't it? what they would do, haven't they? Yeah. Do they have, do they have like, gay bars and drag bars and stuff? They do. I'm so glad you were listening to it and talking about the raids on gay bars. <laughs> It's very low, very low volume. <laughs> um, they did have a gay bar, and we did get tempted to go to one. But when we found out about the, you know, likelihood of police being raided and that sort of thing, and we didn't want to risk it. Yeah, mm. as I say, it was. I was very aware that I'd modified my behaviour when out in public. Right. Well, you were upright for for a start. <laughs> yeah, with pants Which... were on, trousers were up. <laughs> Paul Gag was out my lube on yeah. your mouth. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I was that sweaty, didn't need lube. <laughs> Could have slipped in and slipped out without noticing. Is there no like drag culture? Do they not like have a Kuala Lumpur drag race? Not really. Not really. Not really. It's no. A bit, bit of a bit of a sad state of affairs, it's, isn't it? It's, it's a very very conservative country Ooh. in that respect. Um, you know, it's that if you want to have a look at America, America is still a little bit more liberal than Malaysia. Right. Do, would that, you so. do in so in in general, mm -hmm. not particularly about LGBTQ. Do you see like couples holding hands in the street? Yeah. Okay, so they're not like completely not allowed to no, show any exactly it's, affection. There's a, there are people holding hands and stuff and walking around, um, but there's not there's no snogging on the street. No motorboating. No motorboating. <laughs> no quick hand job. Oh. Yeah. No. God, it would have been a lifetime for you on that holiday, <laughs> wouldn't it? <laughs> I was very heavy in the pants area. Very heavy. Nice. Yeah. It looks, with it, its problems. It looks like a very lovely place to, to, to visit, but I feel that it would be quite repressive to actually be a citizen of that place. Mm -hmm. Well, that's almost the end of the show. Remember to join us on our social media at The Cud TV. Our website is thecud.tv. And of course, on YouTube and podcasts, just search for Chewing the Cud. Well, thank you for watching and join us next time as we go on another adventure. Bye. Bye.